it's Lisa. Uh, I have not been photographing as many different events in the last year or so, but I do seem to take a lot of pictures when I do capture uh, a particular event and memory. And this one is no exception. Next to gardens, probably my next favorite thing to take a lot of photographs are, are art museum tours. My husband and I have been traveling to Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, frequently for his business. And I, on this particular day, I accompanied him to some clients, but there was a client he was going back to see. And so what he, there was just some time that I was going to have free. And he let me off at the Mint Museum uh, uptown location in Charlotte. And then I just walked down to the client uh, when I was finished touring the exhibit. And I wish he'd had an opportunity to go with me, uh, but he didn't get to. And, and this is something that um, this particular type of exhibit, I think, is one that I enjoy a little bit more anyway. And I, when I pulled out my memorabilia, I noticed that this is actually still ongoing. Charlotte has two locations for the Mint Museum. The Randolph Road location is their more traditional art, and then the Mint, the upstown, uptown location is um, the arts and design, the craft and design um, portion of the museum. And I love to go and see the really interesting things that they have going on. This particular exhibit, I've got pictures here from their from their regular uh, permanent exhibit, and then I have some things specific from the collage uh, portion. It's in a, the museum is in a new building to me. I had been to the Uptown location years ago a couple of times, and they built a new building. I don't know exactly when that was, uh, but it's near Duke Energy and Erickson Stadium, and it's, it's really accessible, um, beautiful building, lots of display space, so I'm sure I'll be getting a chance to go back as well. Now, they had a couple of different things going on. They had the collage, and then they had this other exhibit with these flowers, and I can't remember what the flowers were made of. I think they were made of wood. I think it was like very thin would I'm, I'm not certain about that but that was what was also going on um, at the same time and as I say I took some pictures of some of the traditional or some of their uh, permanent exhibit this quilt is not really a quilt this is actually film strips like old movie films and that somebody has taken and put in a format of, of a string quilt so and then there were a couple of you know traditional pieces as well but I thought the collage things were especially interesting, and I love this one, and I'll show you it to you from a distance first, and I'll have to, if I can find it on my um, camera, I'll put on the screen who made this. I hope I have that uh, information. But uh, I believe it was a woman, and this is what you see from a distance as you're walking up to it. It was very large, and I thought, okay, that's all paper. But as I got closer to it, I realized it was paper, actually cardboard, but what it was was packaging. And I can see things like Kleenex box packaging, um, all kinds of different wrappings for, for, all, for lots of just anything that you would have uh, something wrapped in, whether it's food or some other type of product. And these rounded things down here on the bottom are Coca-Cola cans. And it was a really fascinating uh, item that had been created out of a, what would, we would think of as trash. And then I also loved this one that looked like a more of a traditional collage on the back and then had all these frames laying on top of it. I thought that's, that's the kind of thing I could do something with, um, that idea. So a lot of fun things. Um, I even tried to get a little bit of a selfie. I, I'm a bit self-conscious of trying to take my own picture in a museum. <laughs> that just seemed a little bit um, uh, vain to do that when there's all these other interesting things around you. But I did try to snag a picture without people noticing <laughs> what I was doing. Um, and I want to put these on a two-pager. As all these pictures I've been taking has yielded us a lot of two-pagers, and I know many people like them. When I went to look for papers, what I found, I don't remember now what exactly I was looking for, but when I found these, I thought, now these are really interesting for my two-page layout. This is a collection from My Mind's Eye, and I figured I would probably use the, the side with the... Um, um, cameras on it, but what I really like is this chalk with all these frames. My concern was that that, that high car contrast black and white was going to really compete with my photos, and it does. What I think I can do, though, to it is to put another paper underneath it and put all of the photos and everything on that paper and let it just sort of float on this background. As long as I can still see some of the frames, I still have that effect of framed items in a museum. 
So I went to look for some cardstock to put all these things on. I was looking for something yellow and the, my yellows didn't look that great, but this paper does. This is a color called brown sugar or something, something brown sugar. It's an old stamping up color or it was, an, it was a, um, what do they call it? The end colors a couple of years ago. And I have, I have one 12 by 12 and one eight and a half by 11, but I think I can make those work. I have to join them together here to put my photos on. And you'll see once you put those in there that the photos really pop. Now I'm not going to use both of these. I just, I don't know which one I'm going to use, whichever one will be the right size because those are the same thing. And these are going to be my photos in some arrangement on, on this cardstock. And then they'll be sitting on this background paper that where you can see the frames around the outside. And I like that black and white uh, there when you only see a little bit of it uh, going around. And then I think everything really shows up on top of that. And the color from this background just is picked up in all of the, in the chair and all of the, the things in the uh, photographs, even a little bit of what I was wearing on a very cold day, I think in March. So, um, what I need to do is crop some photos down and play with the arrangement a little bit. I also think what would look good for embellishments is to take some jelly prints and maybe make my own embellishments uh, using the jelly prints, kind of create my own little collage to go with this. And I don't know if I'm going to work this in or not. To me, that doesn't really quite go with everything else I have here. I might just stick it in a pocket or something. But anyway, or I might just take, you know, just this little bit of it and use that for the title. Um, and maybe just skip this part in the middle because I I don't remember anything that looked quite like that anyway. So I think I'm just going to trim that down. Just take this and do something like that for part of the title. That'll actually be you know part of the title of the page. And then the photos and the embellishments and journaling is all I'll really need to finish it up. As I started playing with the arrangement of the photos, I realized that that black paper with all of the um, frames could be used to my advantage. And I'm kind of getting a general layout here of how things are going to go and whether or not I'm going to split that 12 by 12 and put a little bit of it on the left hand page. I don't end up doing that, uh, but that was one possible. Actually, I ended up trimming it down and I didn't end up using it over on the other page. So the, I, I think I did this in multiple sessions and I kind of forgot that I was going to use that one part on the other page, but it all worked out. I had enough room. What I discovered though with that black um, paper is that I could utilize those frames and frame things um, because I could cut pieces out and they would be covered by the background paper. You would never know that I had trimmed something out from underneath. So I'm going to frame my photo over on the left, and I also took a little bit out to create some journaling blocks. I had what was left of the frame I cut for myself, and then I had the other one on the lower left corner that had an exact match on the right-hand page. And I'll do some journaling then with a white pen. Now for making my embellishments, I'm using some uh, jelly print papers. And this idea, when I started playing with this, I remembered that I took a class years and years ago from Chamel. I do not remember the name of the class. It was so long ago. It was probably 10 years ago. Um, and this class, one of the things we did in the class was we made embellishments using circle punches. And this reminds me of that. I don't remember exactly what all we did. I just remembered that we, we took a bunch of circles in different sizes and shapes and we stacked them out of different kinds of paper and then put something in the middle, brads or buttons or something. Um, and I think seem to remember that we had some maybe that even had some black touches like um, it may have just been uh, book paper or it may have been some black, solid black paper. I don't remember. But I do know that, that we did that kind of thing and that's what I'm doing here. So this is not completely my idea because it's coming back to me from an old class. She teaches really great classes. I'd, I haven't done one in a long time but, um, but I know there was something similar. Now the layers here, the black is a designer paper because I felt like I needed something consistent through the three embellishments and then the rest are just some random jelly prints that I had that matched. Those triangle things came from the jewelry department at one of the craft stores and I had those in my stash and they, they're kind of a neat shape that I thought worked well. 
that um, brochure, the back of it had some good detail about the exhibit, so I put it use on using photo corners so I could take it back off and read it at a later time if I wanted to. It's a little bit of a challenge figuring out where to put the round embellishments, and I stopped doing my journaling because I realized I was going to need some of that space where the journaling is to actually um, put my embellishment. So I've kind of marked off an area and then I can finish writing and not and still have some room to lay that embellishment on there. I was just running out of room. I added a couple of arrows to show that this part of the large collage is what's represented here. Um, because I'm you know, going to be looking at this years down the road, and so it should be obvious, but I thought I'd go ahead and, and kind of literally point that out. And I finished my journaling here and just kind of brought those words that were covered up down to this area of the journaling. And then I've got my embellishments on the page. So we took a couple of pieces of designer paper, cut out a few bits of them to use in other places, and kind of let those frames be the representation of a gallery. And of course, being the uh, more modern, the craft art, not a lot of this stuff is framed, but it still um, gives you that idea of an art page used jelly prints and with some of my old punches and some kind of cool embellishments to um, to create three unique embellishments for the page that still sort of tie everything together and then we've got a lot of photos from a day at the museum so thanks so much for joining me i'll do some close-ups here so you can see these a little bit more and I'm actually going to add one little thing to this video that has nothing whatsoever <laughs> to do with these art pages. Um, but one of my favorite things in the summertime are our glads. And my husband started um, planting these for me, oh, sometime I guess in the early 2000s. And um, in 2006 he bought a bunch of, or no, 2007, he bought me a bunch of bulbs for Valentine's Day, and he said, I'll plant them all for you, and instead of buying you flowers, I'll, buy, I'll plant all these bulbs, and then he proceeded to work ridiculously long hours, and I ended up planting a lot of the bulbs. Over the years, we've lost some due to cold, we've given tons away, we've bought more bulbs, but I just want to share with you a few of the flowers and kind of leave you with that. I am uh, filming th this last part um, here in early July, and we had we did not we planted some new bulbs this year but the ones from last year of course they come they tend to come up at the same time and they've bloomed at the same time and i just have gobs of them in the house so i want to share a few photos of those uh to end this video and i know every but glads are not everybody's favorite some people think they're funeral flowers but i just love i've always loved them since childhood so i'll share my favorites with you and i hope that you have a very happy summer weekend